Hello and welcome to this Ready Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to kick things off with a mysterious Coffee Lake processor which has surfaced on the internet. So this particular part showed itself on Yahoo auctions of all things a couple of days ago and it was claiming at least to be a Intel i9-9900T which suggests that it is a low power variant of the flagship 9900K. Now this listing did claim that this was an engineering sample and you can see a photo on the screen and we also have a bunch of specs listed for this alleged 9900T part. So what do we actually have here? Well we have 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 1.7 GHz and the seller actually said a boost clock of 3.8 but that is most likely single and dual core boost we would probably expect around 3.3, 3.2, something like that gigahertz when all cores are actually boosting. But the seller also made a claim that this particular processor is faster than the 8700K. So what about the price tag I hear you ask? Well, this was an, an auction, so this price should be taken as not official at all, but they did list it for 35,000 yen, which is just under $320. So assuming this chip is what the seller says it is, what is actually going on here? Well, it's hard to say because it's pure speculation, but the most likely or most logical explanation that comes to my mind at least is that it is just a binning. These are just faulty or false me about it might not be the right word, but 9900k chips that didn't reach the proper frequencies and standards to be one of those chips and rather than just tr track it in the bin, sell it as a lower power part, but of course I could be completely and utterly wrong. Even if again this is an engineering sample for this, doesn't necessarily mean we'll ever see a sort of mass release, but we should obviously wait and see on what if anything happens on this one. But let's move on shall we to something interesting regarding Radeon 7, as we have a very interesting report from the guys over at Fudzilla who are basically trying to speculate on just how much the HBM2 memory is costing AMD here. Now it's not exactly a secret at this point that HBM2 is rather expensive and was definitely sort of blamed a lot for the price of the Vega cards. And based on what Fudzilla have sort of put forward here, AMD are having to buy four HBM2 chips because they, the ones they use at least come in four gigabyte sizes. So in order to get the 16 gigs for the Rialdo on 7, get four chips. Not exactly, you know, extreme mathematics going on here. So obviously AMD didn't necessarily want to set aside a whole other team to create a whole new version of the card because that in itself be rather expensive and it's not cheap to redesigned 7nm either so either way AMD were kind of going to be left holding a fairly hefty bill here so as Fudzilla themselves point out and of course there will be a link to their article in the description below this video it is obviously fairly difficult to actually estimate the exact price that AMD is paying because obviously we don't know what, what deals they've got on with their supplier bulk all that sort of stuff but from what Fudzilla have managed to dig up HBM2 could be as expensive as 320 dollars so assuming that they're correct or at least in the ballpark of correct they're paying half the cost or at least very close to it of the gpu just for the hbm2 memory and when you think about those rumors that have been floating around regarding how some sources are claiming at least that there's going to be a sort of limited availability of these cards it kind of does start to make sense but you could also argue that amd are going to want to at least potentially have the inventory available to do a mass run if this card is really popular because obviously they want to make as much money back as possible that they spent still designing this card and all that sort of stuff like even though they didn't dedicate a whole team to it it's not exactly they rolled this out for free and they're still paying a fairly hefty chunk even if it isn't the exact amount that fuds that are put forward hpm2 is pricey we've discussed this everyone on the earth has discussed this at this point but that's not the only actually the only thing I actually have for you, excuse me, words are hard apparently, regarding 7nm, as we have some interesting reports regarding their mobility lineup. And what we actually have here is some comments from WCCFTech.com regarding the roadmap for 7nm. And what they have actually heard from their sources is that we will not see the 7nm mobility lineup from AMD on store shelves until Q1 2020. 
with maybe some leeway into maybe sort of late 2019. So we're sort of looking at a rough window of late 2019 to Q1 2020. But WC also points out that they are hearing some pretty good things through the grapevine about the performance per dollar of the 7NM mobility lineup and apparently it's going to be very competitive in comparison to what is currently on the market. It's also worth reminding you that Intel are planning on having their 10NM on the market before the year is out. So let's just say Intel gets there first and then Q1 2020 should I say rather we see 7NM mobility. We are very much going to be seeing so a lot of fierce competition between Intel and AMD. So we've got one more AMD piece to discuss before we move on to something regarding NVIDIA, and this is actually regarding James Pryor. So this could just be a case of coincidental timing, because, well, such things are possible in life, but I don't know, I'm sceptical, but I'm, I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead of myself here. So what we actually had was a official press statement from AMD basically saying that they've been doing a bunch of restructuring over at the company. Um, some names have been promoted, for example, Mark Papermaster, who you should be familiar with because he has been in pretty much every AMD conference like Computex and so on, and he is now Executive VP as well as being CTO. We also have a bunch of new talents coming into the company as well, and just various promotions and moving around, all that sort of stuff. But at the same time as AMD are announcing all this restructuring going on over at Stoke and AMD, we had a tweet from James Pryor, who was Senior Product Manager for AMD and had been working there for about six years, and he tweeted that he's no longer working for the company. He said, quote, looking forward to my new adventure in 2019 filled with family, fun and good work. P.S. I no longer work for AMD. More to come. Obviously, he hasn't speculated or even given a hint as to what he's doing next other than spending more time with his family, so it's curious that he's sort of announced his departure from AMD around the sort of time of his restructuring. Does that mean he was fired? Well, no, I doubt it. Perhaps he just took the opportunity to, to leave. That seems more likely to me, given how long he had been working there. It doesn't really seem more like to me that he was let go or anything like that, but it is interesting timing for sure. But let's move on from AMD, shall we, to NVIDIA. And this is actually regarding the GTX 1160. And yes, I said 1160. I know it's all been about the 1660 the last few days, but oh no, the 1160 is back. It just won't quit, apparently. What you have this time is a product listing from the GPU manufacturer Palette. Now, just a sort of bit of backstory, I suppose you could say, product lists are pretty much just a notification of the different versions that are set to produce, a list of potential different SKUs. For example, we saw 39 SKUs listed for the 2060 with different memory configurations, but obviously there hasn't actually been that many released because that would be mildly insane. But it is interesting that Palette have chosen to list the 1160 product codes as well as the 1660 Tie and 1660. So this is not going against the 1660 and 1660 Tie rumours, no, no, no. It's actually going alongside it. So it's a little bit bizarre, to be honest, but does kind of very much hint that we're going to be seeing graphics cards of some description under all three denotations, given that they were submitted to the Eurasian Economics Commission today. And yeah, interesting stuff to say the least. So what is actually going on? pass. It could just be that the 1660 is going to be a, the lower sort of spec end and then obviously the 1660 tie and the 1660 are going to be the higher end. That is my sort of most logical speculation slash assumption slash wild guess throwing at a, dart, a dartboard there but it does seem to be, make the most sense from what we've heard so by no means should we take this as a stone cold confirmation but obviously Palette are very much plugged in as to what's going on and I've probably heard some things that we haven't, so I'm definitely more willing to give this more credence than your average Joe, let's just put it that way. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on all the topics discussed here today, guys. As always, your support is hugely appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.